Good morning and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips and we're with you for the next half hour to gallop through all the headlines that have caught our eyes this morning. You are with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online and on your smart speaker. And we've got so much to talk about. We've been talking all morning, actually having a big argument on who's responsible for banning these marches on Armistice yes, Day. Yes, and the reason we've been having an argument is because it's hard to work out who is responsible. Uh, Basically, the system, as far as Alex and I can work out, is this, that uh, the police have to apply to the Home Office uh, for permission to ban a march. So the Tories, as you pointed out, Alex, are basically saying, well, it's down to well, smart the rally. Well, the police the If they think it should be banned, they should ban it. That's what the Home Office says. Yeah, uh, and I think Mark Rowley is looking for leadership from the government. Uh, meanwhile, it looks as if this march will go ahead. Yeah, I think it is likely to go ahead. Will it go ahead down Whitehall? I don't think so. I think that's easy enough for the police to say, we've got to cordon this off anyway because we're going to have events there on Sunday. And apparently, those lovely people who organise the march, half of whom are directly linked to Hamas, let's remember, um, have said, oh, no, 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 we don't want to disrespect anyone. We just won't go near the Cenotaph. We promise, pretty please believe us. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so Mark Rowley uh, is saying that uh, he will only apply to ban the Armistice Day uh, pro-Palestine pro -Palestine march through London, uh, if there's a serious, if he receives intelligence that there's a serious threat to public safety. So I guess you could say in the last four weeks or so, uh, there haven't been many uh, public safety issues around mm. these marches. So uh, presumably his position right. will be it's fine for it to go ahead. Yeah, I think they've actually got to go with concrete evidence and say, look, we have it on strict intelligence. The police have been, you know, the anti-terrorist police have been following all these different cells and we know there's going to be a serious incident planned during one of these marches, therefore they can't go ahead. I think that's what they've got to do. They've got to go with the body of evidence. But then people like Suella Bradman, you know, she's always tough talking, isn't she? But it's like, are you, are you right walking though? And yeah. she's like, well, you know, if the the police think it should be banned. They, they hate marches. They shouldn't go ahead. You know, the government are never straight with you. They like throwing everyone else under the bus. They talk the talk, but they won't walk the walk. And they like everyone else to pay for it. And I know you're no fan of Rowley. But not. He's no fan of Rowley. <laughs> but, um, but that, you know, I kind of feel like unless they say on high, unless the Home Office says we're going to make a you know decision as government that this march isn't going ahead, then what can he do? Uh, well, yeah, but he you could argue that he's throwing the government under the bus by saying it's out of my hands. Either way, if there is trouble on Saturday, if he lets the march go ahead, if there is trouble on Saturday, he's going to be in trouble, what? big trouble. Guess who's going to the march? I was going to say, it sounds like there going. is going to be Guess who's trouble. going to the march? You'll never guess. You'll never this guess this, this shocked me to the core. Jeremy Corbyn. Well, it's not gardening season, is it? That The allotment is not... It's a bit muddy, a bit boggy and cold right now for yeah. him to be uh, digging up his turnips. Yeah, well, he never, get, he never misses an opportunity he to have, a, have a go at Israel, He loves does a he? good anti-Semitic event, He's not anti-Semitic. He? Anti anti uh, he just doesn't though. like Israel. You just often you know. find him, you know in areas where you might find people who are a bit funny yeah, about yeah, yeah. Israel. Well, you, well, you get these left-wingers like uh, uh, Corbyn, when they say, I'm not, uh, I'm not anti-Jew, I'm not anti-Semitic, I just worry, it's Israel I don't like. Have a look at that, have a look at that. It, it's really interesting. They always say it. It's not... It's not Jews I'm against, it's Israel. Well, if you ask the average Jew, uh, they will tell you if you're against Israel, you're against me. Uh, and I think yeah, that kind of makes hard. sense. It's a bit like saying, I'm not against British people, but I really hate Britain. Yeah, well, that's exactly what really work, does Think it? about it. Just it. Doesn't think work. about it. So don't listen to really Corbyn work. and that gang. But you can guarantee whenever there's stuff going on, it, you know, because nothing's happened, everyone's become emboldened, and all the dodgy people are now coming out of the woodwork and taking the opportunity to get involved, aren't they? And so, of course... Here's Tommy to you, Robinson. Tommy Robinson. Tommy Robinson's popped back up out of uh, obscurity because he's now back on Twitter, isn't he? Elon Musk has said, we've missed you, Tommy. Get back <laughs> online. Uh, and you, I think he quite Hawkins, framed it like that. Yeah. It. Um, but, you know, he's jumping in there and saying, let's all go and defend the Senator. Something that I was very for last weekend. I think that, yeah, defending the Senator is a good thing to do. But then, of course, you start getting the, you know, the sort of hooligan types, don't you? Yeah, then I, it, it, I, just, it, it starts being not a good look. Well, I, I applauded you for saying saying that you were going to go and protect the Senate yeah, should anymore. that be uh, involved in the march. Uh, but I don't want to see you uh, linking arms with Tommy Robinson. No, I don't So the English Defence League, my... as you say, Alex, they're, they are saying they're going down there to protect the Senate. Uh, they're actually going down there because they're looking for trouble. Uh, and the other name that these people call themselves is the Football Hooligans. That's not a very, it, not a very flattering name to give yourself, is it? Name. But it is. But this is, 
essentially what's happened now with this sort of nationwide hysteria about uh, what's going on in Israel and Gaza, which is a horrific, atrocious situation with innocent civilians dying on both sides. But it has become, which team do you support? Even Joe Biden early on said, oh, well, your side seems to be winning. Yeah. And you just think this isn't a team sport. It's not Man City versus Man U in the Middle East derby. You know, you can't just turn up and say, well, I'm Israel, I'm pro-Israel, I'm pro-Palestine, well, I'm going to go out with do. my flag and my banners and my t-shirts people do it's, they it's, do. The, it's the foot they call it the footballization of the argument oh. uh, and tommy robinson uh, tweeted uh, his real name of course is the down-to-earth working class name of Stephen yaxley lennon uh, he wrote on x formerly known as twitter uh, saturday the 11th of the 11th of the 11th sunday uh, London, your country needs you. It'll be on Saturday, of course. Now, someone who the country probably doesn't need that much is Labour MP Imran Hussein, who has quit as, get this, Sakir Starmer's shadow ministerial team. And I think he was shadow UK work or so, <laughs> UK matter. workload. Or I don't, just, basically, Sakir Starmer's uh, deputy, deputy, deputy milk monitor says he's upset <laughs> that Starmer won't call a ceasefire, so he's disappeared. No one's heard of him, of course, but he made a very impassioned speech to Parliament. I mean, he was bellowing so loud, he was like a human incendiary device. Yeah, he was a shadow minister for and we all, the New Deal for working people. We all know about that. Uh, Keir Starmer has calculated that if he loses every Muslim vote and he's in danger of doing that, he'll still win the next election. So it's all about mathematics, folks. Uh, I don't think that uh, Starmer will rail back for, from not calling for okay, a ceasefire. You know, he will... Starmer sits there and he, he will get intelligence directly from the intelligence services, as yeah. will David Lammy, the foreign secretary, who will be being briefed on what the actual situation is by those people who really know things. He doesn't and care. And David though. Lammy, who's got an opinion on everything, remarkably yeah. silent. But, but, it's good, but uh, in the end, uh, Starmer doesn't care about this. So he's saying can uh, resign, all the Muslims can resign, he can lose every Muslim vote, he'll still win the next election. Those are his calculations. So he will stick to not calling for a ceasefire. Uh, I tell you who also probably won't call for a ceasefire because he'll want the destruction of the Israeli state is uh, Pink Floyd rock legend Roger Waters, uh, who uh, is constantly accused of anti-Semitism, and you can see why. Uh, he is claiming uh, that uh, Hamas's massacre of 1,400 innocent Israeli citizens was thrown out of all proportion. Speaking uh, to a journalist on the origins of the October the seventh attack, uh, he said uh, this is a false flag oh, operation and that Israelis are telling lies about what happened on just, that day. That's just it's so appalling to suggest that. Absolutely appalling. Yeah, yeah, Especially well, in light of that that what we did yesterday is where we premiered exclusive interviews this channel did with some of the mothers of young people still yeah, being let's held ha let's have a listen. Let's have, a, let's have a listen and a watch of some of these uh, what uh, Roger Waters says uh, some of these Israeli lies. The last thing I heard was my 12-year-old Yegi begging, saying, don't take me, I'm too young. You can't take me, I'm too young. He was repeating it a couple of times and then the phone hung up and the line went off. And that was the last time I heard of them. Um, as the chairman said, we heard nothing since. We don't know anything of their whereabouts. We don't no know sightings. whether they're alive. We don't know For how long. where they are, whether they're being taken care of, their children. They're just children. And here's another, here's another lie uh, from the mother of, of Ron, a 19-year-old Israeli soldier kidnapped by the terrorists. Her name is Mayan Sherman, telling lies. I'm not sure that people understand that, you know, the Hamas is much worse than ISIS. Much worse. They, they have done things that you cannot imagine. Uh, that they have done to, to, to people, to little children, to families, to women, and they filmed everything themselves. So you can look for it and you can see it online if you want to. And afterwards, let's see if you can protest against uh, Israel. These, so, these are mothers yeah. held in those awful dungeons beneath Gaza Strip. And shame on you, shame Roger on you. Waters, for calling them liars. Yeah, How, dare Jacobs, How dare you? you. How dare son. you? Twelve-year-old son trapped underneath. By the way, the men, by the way, course. Dave Gilmore, his uh, bandmate, her, his wife Polly, uh, 
uh, called uh, Roger Waters the biggest anti-Semite alive. And uh, Dave Gilmore confirmed that. Now, I'm not wow. saying that, but uh, you can understand why people think Roger Waters is an unconscionable anti-Semite, can't you? Those people are not lying, Roger, and shame on you. Yeah, well, quite. Now, and this is an interesting story. That, again, another thing we've been discussing this morning, this is the news that Italy are going to be sending some of their illegal migrants to Albania in a deal struck up with that country, mirroring what we plan to do with Rwanda, a policy that very literally and figuratively has not taken off. Um, but, you know, <laughs> what is so remarkable about this is we know that a huge amount of the uh, people trafficking operations in Europe are done by the Albanian mafia. People are being shipped from Albania on small boats, you know, through Europe and then on small boats over to the UK. We've just done a deal with the Albanian government to send back the Albanians to Albania who are being, you know, brought in to be in their black market to work on cannabis forms and the like. So it seems to me what's going to happen now is this is migrant musical chairs. You're going to have Italy sending some of their illegal migrants to Albania and then Albania will be then sending them over to Britain in boats and because they're not Albanian, we won't send them back. Hey. So basically, we've got a deal to send back Albanians to Albania yeah, because okay. it's a safe country and Albanians are fine. But Albanian tra people traffickers control a lot of these migratory flows. So what's going to happen if Italy sends their migrants to Albania? How long before they're on boats to Britain? But because they're not Albanian, they will then... Don't do worry, the don't worry. The, the Italian scheme won't work. None of these schemes will probably work, particularly if it's Italy and Albania. Uh, and meanwhile, I mean, what this is really about is Britain was internationally vilified for its uh, migrant scheme, its scheme to send our uh, migrants to Rwanda, to East Africa. We were, we were everybody piled on, oh, that's evil, that's wrong. Oh, you wrong. can't do that. And guess what? Italy is now considering it. These are the people that come across the Mediterranean to Italy, uh, potentially 750,000 of them this year. Think about that. And now, uh, guess who wants to get involved in the Rwanda scheme type uh, affair? It is uh, Germany. I know. Of all countries. Germany. Germany now is thinking about a Rwanda scheme. So we were internationally vilified for this, and now everybody else wants a slice of the action. And Germany, whose government was accused by Italy of directly funding some of the NGOs who are putting boats in the Mediterranean Sea to intercept some of the vessels coming over from Tunisia to bring them to Italy. So Germany of Angela Merkel's refugees welcome fame suddenly seem to be waking up to the idea that you can't just assume that everybody who wants to come and settle in Europe is a nice person who's escaping torture and persecution and desperately needs to be here. Well, quite. Slow it, Germany, exactly. Finally yeah. getting the point. Angela, Angela Merkel, uh, lucky Germany. She's no longer in charge. The most overrated politician oh, in gosh. the history of politics. The colossus of Europe. Absolutely useless. That's what she was. This migrant crisis all over Europe is her Started damn fault. With her. It's her damn fault. Mm -hmm. She was an idiot. Let's move on. Let's talk about someone who definitely wasn't an idiot. He was a hero to the nation. Captain Tom Moore at the age of nearly 100 uh, went round his garden and hundreds of times on his walking frame and raised, there he is, there raised millions and millions of pounds for the NHS. Uh, not that they ever needed the money, but it was a very marvellous gesture. Uh, his family formed a charity, and now that charity is in big trouble. Uh, now, the story today is that Hannah Ingram Moore and That's her husband, daughter, they, right? uh, yeah, her, yeah. Her, her daughter, his daughter, they uh, built a spa in the middle of their Bedfordshire An mansion. An NHS spa, obviously. Uh, uh, obviously. And, then, and then the local planning uh, council said, well, actually, you didn't apply for planning permission, so you've got to pull this down. They said, oh, oh no, no, but it's for the charity. It's for coffee mornings and for uh, physical rehabilitation for older people. It's part of the Tom Moore charity. Local council said, yeah, pull the other one. It's got bells on. Pull it down. So that hideous spa in the middle of their grade two listed mansion is now going to be uh, demolished. Well, it just so happens that uh, Captain Moore's daughter, Hannah Ingram Moore, spoke to our very own peers just last night. Let's go back to the start of this. When you first applied for planning permission for this, what was the purpose? What did you want this to be? So you have to go back a little bit in time. Um, people will have seen when he was walking that we had um, a small above ground pool on the driveway. And when um, he had fallen and broken his hip and um, was terribly ill, he came home and wanted to rehabilitate. And he'd said, I fancy 
and um, walking up and down inside the pool. Yeah, we're never going to get you in there. Mm. That was the foundations of, well, maybe we can get one of those pools where you can walk against um, the mm. resistance. Of, but it never happened because of COVID. Now, in the slickest segue you're ever going to hear on live television, I once needed a rehabilitation because I fell over, broke my ankle, and had to have emergency surgery to put plates in it. You're and drunk. you know how I did it? Because I was drunk. drunk. Because I was drunk. And this feeds nicely into the story that apparently boozy British women and their wine o'clock culture are blamed for us being the worst drinkers in the world. Biggest That's drinkers. right. Well, I can confirm British that. women. British women are the biggest drinkers yeah, yeah, among females in the we've world. We've topped the list of the heaviest binge drinkers in the world. I mean, that's a pretty... So what time is what wine o'clock for you? About 7.30 in the morning? <laughs> mm, look at the legs on that, Kev. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I knew there was an explanation. Uh, but um, seriously, uh, this is uh, the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, uh, has compared alcohol consumption across 38 countries in its annual report on health. And guess who's top of the league? Makes you patriotic, doesn't it? Yeah. Makes, makes you feel proud to be British. It's British women. But worth pointing out that men do consistently binge drink more than women. Even in the UK, it's 45% of men are bingers and 26% of women. Yeah, but, but we, could that, take our, we could take our top, drink. We top the chart. And do you know what? You can't blame us. It's not yeah. exactly fun out there, is it? Yeah, but look... look I go home after a day with you and the first thing I do is yeah, reach but, for the wine bottle. Well, apparently, then you will have at least six drinks in a single session. Six? That's just the this start. Though. Just That's, just the start. Splitzer, That's it? just the start. That's just the start. No, we're being facetious, folks. Don't drink too much. Don't. It's bad for your health. Obviously, everything in moderation. Uh, let's move on. Uh, talking of moderation, let's uh, move on to the king's extremely that was a very moderate. moderate so some might say so very, very boring speech uh, that he delivered to the House of Commons yesterday. Uh, we got some. Uh, uh, we've got uh, some footage, I think, I of, of the king in action. Sleep. Let me get my wine uh, back yeah, in. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, God, he didn't exactly fill it with razzle-dazzle. Oh. But the point about this speech is uh, it has left Rishi Sunak with a headache because a lot of the Tories are saying, we're trying to win an, an election. I mean, it's a long mm. shot, but they still want to win next year. And uh, that speech... Uh, they said, was full of nothing. Uh, it was, was so not boring. dramatic enough. Right. Uh, it was, bo I mean, the king delivered it in a very, very boring way. So boring. But in fairness to him, uh, he didn't have much to work with. The material was very boring. So here's a clip of basically absolutely nothing. Enjoy. <laughs> My government will introduce legislation to create a smoke-free generation by restricting the sale of tobacco so that children currently aged 14 or younger can never be sold cigarettes and restricting the sale and marketing of e-cigarettes to children. Uh, well, yeah, but, but uh, the, the smoking thing, by the way, I think it's very bizarre. I mean, no one was calling for that. No one was. It's extremely divisive. You can imagine in the future some bloke going, Well, I'm 28, you're 27, want to buy some Marlboro. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. No one was calling for it. Why? has Sunak yeah, put himself on the rack about something that uh, no one's interested he in. He made five promises to the nation, didn't he? None of which he is uh, able to deliver, particularly stopping the boats. Top of the list, the top demand on doorsteps didn't even feature in the King's speech. And people sort of saying, well, you know, what's he for? He's just a geek who likes AI conferences and banning smoking. Yeah. Um, but somebody who does like speaking out on things and is raising a few eyebrows in Parliament, of course, the is future leader. Parliament. The future leader. As soon as that woman and opens her mouth and everyone's like, well, there she, is. there she goes. She wants to be the next Prime Minister. I mean, good luck. I don't think she stands a chance. I just think she's actually the government's useful mouthpiece. She'll say things that otherwise Rishi Sunak's too scared to say. Uh, I'm not sure that... I mean, I, I know what you're saying there, uh, but I think uh, she's setting out her own agenda. Do you think She's so? grabbing headlines. Uh, she's full of ambition. Uh, if she does get to be the leader of the Tory party, it, it looks like uh, she'll be the leader of the opposition. So good luck to you, Suella, and all who sail in you. Uh, let's talk about Jamie Bulger mm. now. Extremely important story, this. Now, uh, John Venables, uh, the monster who killed ja Jamie when he was just a child, he was only 10 years old when he killed this poor little kid uh, with his mate, uh, John Thompson. Uh, and they, he, he's he's basically been in and out of jail ever since he did this. Uh, he's currently in jail for paedophile offences, having a lot of paedophile images. Uh, he's up for parole. Uh, and uh, apart from the fact that 
he shouldn't be up for parole, if you ask me, uh, because the parole board nearly always lets dangerous people out. Uh, th th this is being held in camera. We, the public, aren't allowed to know about it. And worse than that, Nora Jamie's parents. Yeah, they're not even outrageous. able to give evidence, are they? Explaining and giving their statements why they think he should remain behind bars. Uh, but you'd think that they would have absolutely the right to do that. And if they didn't have the right to say, well, listen, this is our fear, this is our suffering, this is why we think he doesn't deserve to be back on Britain's streets, they're not even going to yeah. hear or learn what the decision is. And we, we the public, is. we the public should know what's going on here. The trouble with the parole board it is has this propensity for letting dangerous people out, like uh, Colin Pitchfork, mm. uh, who murdered and yep. raped two schoolgirls, uh, who was found after his release about two weeks later hanging around outside a girls' school. Gary Glitter, doing 16 years for horrendous paedophile offences, mm. for some reason let out after only eight years, had to be returned immediately. Yeah. Uh, we've got some uh, footage of... Uh, uh, Jamie's poor father, Ralph Borger, speaking to Talk Today uh, recently. Well, to be honest with you, I, I think you've got to do everything you can to try and keep him behind bars because he's been a danger from day one. He's re-offended. Mm. To, to me, I think he enjoys what, he, what he's doing. And he's a ticking time bomb just mm. waiting to go off, in, in my opinion. You see, the, the thing is, he's right. You see, John Fenables was a danger to children when he was 10 years old. Mm. He's gone on to become a prolific paedophile. Yeah, twice recorded so in prison. This guy is quite, child clearly, abuse he's quite clearly a danger to children. He's no, a danger think. to children. He was when he was a child, and he is when he's an adult. Why are we even considering letting him out? And what I don't trust is the parole board. The parole board have this mandate to let as many people out as they can. Mm. And we are not in safe hands with the parole board. No, whenever we have these appeal hearings, like the murder of uh, Zara Alina, getting his sentence cut shorter, um, I mean, it's just sometimes the decisions made seem utterly ridiculous, ludicrous, flying in the face of not just common sense, but public decency, uh, it, speaking. Indeed. Uh, talking of decisions, uh, I think this is very interesting, uh, mm. that uh, Elon Musk, uh, the owner of Twitter, I hate the way he's just changed the name. So X. every time you read a newspaper now, it, it says it says it says uh, he, he wrote on X, formerly, formerly known, known as Twitter. Twitter. So let's just call it Twitter and let's tell Elon Twitter. tell Elon Musk to yeah. do one. He did a prince, uh, didn't he? He's turned his platform into a sign. Yeah, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, uh, what's his name? Zuckerberg's done the same with Facebook. Why do they do this anyway? Uh, he has uh, allowed back. On to Twitter, that's what we're going to call it. Uh, two people have been banned for several years now. Tommy Robinson, who we spoke about earlier, uh, you know, English Defence League, far right and all that. And uh, also far right, uh, former Apprentice uh, candidate uh, Katie Hopkins. Mm. So uh, she's back on as well. Uh, they've both been banned uh, since uh, for about three, four years now. So, uh, interesting decision. I yeah, think. do you know, it's funny because when you look at uh, the people who are allowed on Twitter and what had happened over the course of years, love people or loathe people, essentially, it was pretty much coming down on one side. If you have views that weren't in line with the sandal-wearing dot-com bros of San Francisco who are intersectional, support every type of made-up, uh, confected human rights out there, the sort of neo-ideology... Californian. Sort of ..place religion... <laughs> Yeah, just basically Californians. Yeah. Um, th then if you didn't sort of run with that crowd, that you were essentially banned. Now, I am no fan of either of these characters. Um, and frankly, I wish that people on the extreme left and the extreme right just didn't exist at all. But you can't have it one side, can't you? You can't say, well, these views are hateful and harmful and offensive, but all of these are OK. Kids having puberty blockers, that's OK. You know, let's allow children to maim themselves at the age of 13 and change their lives forever with medical intervention for a psychological condition that affects about 0.01% of the population. Yeah, that's all good. But actually, anybody who's talking out against these things, well, no, they've got to be silenced. Now, I think that um, uh, Tommy Robinson and Katie Hopkins certainly engage in rhetoric that I wouldn't condone, uh, and I don't particularly enjoy it, um, and I don't think it's always helpful when people want to have a mature conversation about subjects that really do need to be discussed, but you can't just shut people down.
it doesn't matter if it's helpful or not. It is about free speech. Exactly. Uh, and uh, frankly, I think we have to tolerate uh, opinions that we don't like. And th with these two, I think most people don't like what they say because they are extremely far right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what Katie Hopkins has been accused of in the past, and uh, Stephen Yaxley Lennon. <laughs> Stephen Yaxley Lennon, uh, 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 otherwise known as uh, Tommy Robinson. No, I mean we know what they stand for, but they they should be allowed to speak. Of I mean we should. should. You can't have an intelligent debate about anything unless you understand everybody's right. opinion. Right. But on the grand scheme of things, the way I see it is the level of right wing that they're accused of being of is the level of left wing that's now fashionable. You know, if it's sort of like equal and opposing forces, the amount of stuff and nonsense and dross we seem to be getting, which I find very harmful to society, from those purporting some of these neo ideologies, is as dangerous, quite frankly. Well, that's like, but I mean, they've got a right to say it. Uh, let's have a look at Tommy Robinson's tweet to, uh, as mm. he was welcome back to X. There you go. Yeah, I'm grateful to Elon Musk for giving me my voice back at such an important time. I've been censored, attacked, slandered and imprisoned for shining a light on uncomfortable truths that our government wished to hide. The public are now aware I was telling the truth. We have lots to do. And it seems he's going to be kicking everything off by uh, calling everyone to go to the Cenotaph on Saturday, which I'd sort of say, well, please, if, you, if you're going to go and support our country, does it have to be with somebody who is uh, generally a bit contentious and divisive? I don't know. Yeah, this, I, is, this all thinks sensibly. I think we're all uh, on the edge of our seats about what might happen on uh, Saturday. I might go down and have a look myself. Well, uh, Alex, sadly, we've come to the end we of have... this part of our show. Yeah, thank you for tuning us. But please do join us a bit later for our new show, Crosstalk, where we're going to be talking about all of these topics and a lot more. That's coming up at 1pm. But up next first is Julia Hartley Brewer. Do stay tuned to Talk TV and we'll see you at 1. Everybody. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining us. You're watching The Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. Welcome to Friday Night with Nadine. Here on Primetime, we like to speak to the business people behind big moments. Good evening, I'm Piers Morgan, Uncensored in New York City. Very impressive. Well played. I'm three days into the job. What have I done wrong? Yeah. And your face just stared <laughs> out at me. Ah. Me and you, conquer time. Who that wins? Happens. You. <laughs> Do you know what I love about tour today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. Are you actually speech writing for Rishi Sunak? I'm so rich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, frankly, uh, I'm going to take the side of boozed up Brits against these pompous. What, you mean you're not going to support Mayor Jose no, Luis No, I Sanz. am not. Stop pandying to the NIMBYs, to the naysayers and the National Society for the preservation of the habitat of the lesser spotted newt. The problem lies in the bureaucracy. Yeah. It's almost like those highly paid consultants don't really know what they're doing. First thing they teach you in weather school is never confuse dog walkers with doggers. Twitter, you sons of <laughs> <laughs> Can you please reinstate my account? Yeah, Thank you. There's a threat that you'd be worried about. <gasps> so are you saying that you're being overwhelmed, that you're inundated? We are really working hard for you. We're just asking patients to be patient with us. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google?